um, we're going to do a little thing uh, that has come to be called Calm Tea Chatterfall. There's a, a group practice that a lot of us like to start meetings when we want people to get to know each other, um, which is a very noisy sharing of short conversations. And online that becomes chaotic. It becomes literally too much noise. So today we're doing a Calm Tea Chatterfall way and I'm gonna give you a prompt. And I'm gonna ask you to type your response in the chat box, but don't hit enter. And today, just for fun, when you're done typing, um, put your hands on top of your head and that will be a signal that you're done, okay? Um, so you're gonna type in the chat, you're not gonna hit high, and you're not gonna hit enter until I say go. I'm gonna be looking for a visual signal if you're able to give it. Some of us will not have cameras and you won't be able to give it and I'll just have to guess. And oh my God, I've seen people I haven't seen in a long time. My goodness, I'm just bursting. I'm sorry, forgive me. As an old lady, I get very childish. Okay, here's your first prompt. The most important reason or our opportunity to tap peer knowledge is dot, dot, dot. The most important reason or opportunity to tap peer knowledge is dot, dot, dot. And go ahead and type it in the chat, but don't hit enter. Gives you a chance to stretch too. I had a vaccine in this arm yesterday. It doesn't like moving. <laughs> okay, hit enter. Let's see what we got. Now, scroll back. I forgot to do something to make this easy, but scroll back up to the first thing and just take a gentle read. You don't have to read everything, but just take a gentle read through what people said. And next time I'll put the little marker so it will be easy to find. And maybe there's some perspective there that really resonates with you, it's shared, or maybe there's something that surprises you. Note where something is shared and note where something surprises you. There's a lot of, for me, there's a lot of resonance here. Ooh, exotopy. Ooh, cool word. <laughs> And there's a lot of us here today, so don't feel like you need to read all of them. It's okay, okay? So here comes the next one. The biggest challenge of asking for and eliciting expertise from my peers is, the biggest challenge of, you know, accessing, getting it, sharing it. And again, you can type it and just hold for a second. Um, you can, you know, do your hair too, if you want, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. Can you pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time? Okay. So those of you with a camera and I'm using you as my signal people. Um, so go ahead and hit enter. Oh, take a second to skim. Being vulnerable. Yeah, Helen. Caitlin said the same thing. Oh, vulnerability is showing up a lot. Not knowing what you don't know, so you don't know what to ask for. Okay, I think you guys have covered everything. I think we can go home now. <laughs> okay, here's the last one. What I most want to learn or practice around peer assistance is. What I most want to learn or practice is.
Okay, go ahead and hit enter. I want to learn, whoops. <laughs> I like that. That's perfect. Constructively humble. Trust. So as we will save the chat, okay? And later on, if you have a moment and you're looking at the artifacts that are shared so lovely by this um, Knowledge Cafe team, which by the way, guys, you are so lucky to have this group of volunteers doing this. Thank you, team. Um, it's a very interesting way to look at narrative capture. You can take that data and do um, some sense making on it from very general, you know, this is the gist of it to actually making sense of it. So when you're using the chat artifacts, every single person can contribute and their data has validity and equality across all the other data. It's not because I'm really good at interrupting the meeting or I'm really good at speaking extemporaneously. So interestingly, the chatterfall in a virtual meeting can give you access to some narrative pieces that can have very high value if you choose to pay attention to them. So thinking about what you ask people for and then how you honor and make sense of and use and apply the data is an important practice part of peer assistance. So there you have it. You already have done peer assistance and we're only 10 minutes in and I'm gonna hand it over to Jeanetta. Thank you, Nancy, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us in our second Knowledge Cafe of the Year. Today, we are going to explore together peer assistance support. And 3 a.m. for the members helping us today are Kate Poo, Nancy White, and Tony Sittoni. But before we continue, I would like to invite you all to our third Knowledge Cafe of the Year. The topic will be knowledge retention, and the speakers will be Rocio Sanz and John Howell. This will be held on the 18th of March at 3 p.m. Central European time. And of course, we'll promote the event through our multiple channels. So stay tuned and we hope that you will be part of us again in the meantime. Enjoy and have fun in this Knowledge Cafe. And thank you all the team and Jorge, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Gineta. Yeah, the stage is mine, but I don't have much to say here. We're going to be doing peer assist, not just talking about it. So we're going to start with a couple of exercises. Um, Nancy, what exactly are we doing now? We're going to start with a fishbowl, yes? I've got children in the background, so I have to remember to mute myself, though I think they're all on their tablets right now. Um, it's winter holiday here. Um, we're going to do a user experience fishbowl. And the methods that we've selected to use today all come from the liberating structures repertoire. They're familiar in many other contexts too, because they all have similar roots. So those of you who are facilitators, you'll recognize much of this stuff. And there's a link to each of them and resources in the slides should you want to know more later. Um, user experience fishbowl isn't often positioned as a peer assistance method. So as you experience it, look and see how it might be used. And then at the end, we can um, see, you know, how would this be as a method, particularly in the online world where we're trying to do knowledge sharing and we have access to knowledge sharing. So Kate and Tony and I, we're gonna be in the fishbowl and um, Alice is gonna spotlight the three of us. Um, and the rest of you, you're welcome to turn off your camera. You're welcome to mute your mic. Um, and so we're going to be the fish and you are the bowl. And we're going to take about 10 minutes to talk about the issues of peer assistance and mutual support because we all have different experiences, some similarities, some differences. And we're going to wrestle with this. This is our challenge to talk with each other to, you know, explore this topic. After about 10 minutes, Alice is going to put you in small groups and you're going to get a chance to do the same thing with your peers. And I'll give you a little more cues on that when we get to that moment. So um, I'm looking at my clock and it's 12 minutes after and I write this down because I get carried away and I'll talk for like five hours, which is why you have to be careful with me in peer assistance. You got to shut me up. Um, but Tony and Kate, let's talk about, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly that comes out of the thing that we are often calling peer assist, which is a particular method 
but think more about peer assistance and what is required in which, you know, I've kind of been framing as mutual support. And anybody can start and we'll just build off each other. Thanks, Nancy and um, Katrina. Uh, perhaps I'll just kick this off. And I think it might be logical to start off from the point of having a common understanding about what peer assistance really is. Uh, putting my mind to thought on that, um, I'd sort of come up with what would be a, my loose definition of peer assistance, which are sets of processes that tap knowledge from more experienced peers to support and assist through facilitated shared learning to provide solutions for current problems. I think in that we can flesh out some key ingredients about what uh, constitute the pillars of peer assistance. That is knowledge from more experienced peers um, directed at supporting um, as an assistee who probably needs a solution or um, guidance forward. And the format is through facilitated shared learning with the objective of providing solutions. I think the emphasis also is that um, it's an approach that seeks to, to, to learn more before actually doing it rather than learning after doing it. That's, That's my thought about it. The ODI definition, the thing I really love about the ODI definition, and there's a link to it in the last, in the resource slide, is that it talks about learning before. Uh, I, I, I currently want to challenge part of that definition, which is from a more experienced peer, um, because how do you qualify a more experienced peer? And sometimes it is a less experienced peer who may have an insight through what we call a naive question or experience in a different domain that triggers the, the unleashing of the knowledge. Um, so I, for me, it, the peer to peer is the essential part of the definition. Um, and the other part that I wanna challenge, so you see, I'm challenging right off the bat, I'm so hard, um, is that it always has to be a facilitated process. And in fact, if we give peer assistance that exclusive, it has to be a facilitated process, how many people say, I don't have time for that? Oh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, someone, someone else has to do that for me. And then we begin to give up our power as holders and sharers of knowledge. And for me, this is, this is the kind of switch that's really coming up for me is that in our good intentions of creating formats that we facilitate for others, we're taking control of the process. And I think there's a time and a place for those facilitated organized things. I, it, peer assist itself is a fabulous process, but I'd like to kind of stretch that conception to something a lot more fundamental about our daily habits of how we interact with each other as sources and recipients of knowledge. Radical me. Yeah, well, amen to that. Um, what I would kind of say with the plus one is that um, I'm really curious about how the nature of our conversation lets us be self-governing in any of our peer interactions. Um, I've shared with a number of you guys that I'm currently doing research on how conversation helps us overcome polarized views, particularly as it pertains to the environment. So sustainability obstacles, how do we come together? And if you look at a lot of what's going on, it looks like there are lots of sages on the stage or facilitators in flight, if you will, looking for an alliteration there. And what I would love to be able to help people see is that it doesn't take a lot of skill or even courage to be able to do practices of dialogue and practices of facilitation. And so my research is actually looking at successful conversations and using AI to see where those moves are really drawing people towards great options, you know, and brilliant innovation processes, and also getting them really kind of drawn towards action. They're more ready to act. But what, what has sort of been interesting for me as I reflect on all this is that, um, it does take a different posture. It takes a different sort of mental model 
you have to enter into it with this readiness to be changed, this readiness to go in and sort of be informed, as you said, by the air quotes, the naive. And you have to be ready to discover that you have some responsibility around your current knowledge. Wow. That can be really just intimidating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for example, I see a number of you who are out there who have been part of the Columbia program with me and you've been my students and you know that there are times where you've said to me, well, you know the answer. And I realize that I know part of it, but I don't know all of it and I have work to do. And similarly, I've said to them, oh, you know the answer. And I've realized I need to shut up. Sorry guys, if that was, Ill, that was rude. I need to be able to know in what way I don't actually know the answer. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Tony, now, now, that, now that we've taken your beautiful definition and stretched it a little bit, how does that feel? <laughs> uh, no, I, I do agree with you. I mean, um, amongst the things that I would also just point out that make um, PA a useful tool for in, in, in development is that peer assistance is basically, it's, it's fun. I mean, this is some of the attributes about it. Mm -hmm. um, as well, we can tell from um, our engagement right now, it's certainly focused, um, quick, you know, in, in helping to flesh out some of the um, immediate solutions that one would be looking for. And um, it's also flexible, as you, as you put it, that uh, can lend itself to many different um, contexts. I think pra practically, if I'm to relate it to my uh, work experience, I have seen PA, that's peer assistance approaches being applied in um, different work um, contexts. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk about personal, sorry, peer assistance being useful during uh, staff transitions, especially uh, at the point of onboarding new staff and trying to ensure that uh, new staff can quickly be brought you know on board to take on their um, responsibilities um, smoothly and to fit into the new uh, work setting um i've also seen p assistance work very well uh in implementation of projects and i think a key lesson here is maybe trying to ensure that uh, p assistance can be applied throughout the life cycle of a project right through from design um, implementation to to to, to close out. Uh, I think the value of getting together um, peers to uh, maybe give uh, advice or input into when a new project is or a new activity is taking off uh, can't be overemphasized here, and that underscores the value of peer assistance. There are many more examples to give, of course. But I want to pass on to you, Nancy. So I think I, I really appreciate the pragmatic um, uh, grounding you add there. And I think the repertoire of things we can do is much broader than um, peer assists. I mean, Cam for Dev was one of the organizations to really shine a light on peer assists uh, in the development world through the creation of that lovely video. I don't know if you guys remember it from the early 2000s with those little whoop, whoop, whoop guys doing the peer assistance. Um, but there's different kinds of peer assistance and how do you how do you determine when to do it so for me when there's technical peer assistance a peer assist which is i have a problem i assemble a, a, a group of experts to help give me advice makes sense because technical ex ex expertise kind of sits in the realm of complicated knowledge it requires an expert in order to make sense and figure out what to do right um, and therefore that power differential has a reason um, and that's one form, but there's also, and I, I'm trying to not look at the chat, but I, I, I do look at the chat. Um, and there's this continuum of informal peer assistance or different types of structured peer assistance that are useful in different contexts. And in um, trying to do sense making or contextualize knowledge, sometimes uh, over expertise is a problem. It narrows the sites too soon rather than opens the possibilities. And you want something that is more on a peer to peer nature. You may or may not want it facilitated because of the context. If it's facilitated, is it in public? It is in private? Is there safety? Is there trust? So that to me brings kind of the final thing I want to throw on the table because I think we're just about at 10 minutes, 
which is peer assistance without mutual support, I think we're losing something in the equation because it's, an, it's not enough to know what to do next. You have to have that sense of agency, um, some kind of support, especially if you're doing something new or risky or unusual, that somebody is standing metaphorically or practically behind you. And I think in the online environment, we have this opportunity for isolated practitioners to get support and assistance from each other and then know they're there to go back to for support. Because often in working in an area where you're uncertain, where you're having to learn something, you're having to prepare, having that support could be the difference that makes a difference. And online, we can offer that to each other even if we're not on the same project or co-located. So, um, you know, peer can be anyone or it could be an expert, everything in between. I want to just respond to this. So one of the things Nancy and I talked about was how um, a lot of experts, people who are researchers or their higher education institutions or their think tanks are wringing their hands now because they're realizing they have this problem that is called in literature, the loading dock problem. So they bring knowledge and often good research up to the loading dock and they say, goodbye. And her bringing out, Nancy's bringing out the idea of mutual support is so, so vital to solving this problem. So it's not enough that we go and do this research and we just say, go off on your way. We need to be with you and supporting you and, and vice versa. Um, and I think it's really exciting that the academy, if you will, has named that as a problem. But what the academy has not been doing really well is if you go a little bit upstream, I just read an article yesterday and I'll try to put it into the chat, is that it still is ambivalent about peer knowledge. The academy is ambivalent because they on the one hand say, we need to go to the first peoples and ask them about their knowledge. We need to talk to the people who have been kind of living and breathing that experience of something and we need to bring it in. But the Academy has this very love-hate relationship with local knowledge. And mm -hmm. so ironically, they've been able to say, yep, they got this problem with the loading dock, but they haven't even been able to figure out how they can be more comfortable with the knowledge itself. So I'll, yeah. I'll shut up after that comment because I think people have seen that. The, um, the chat is going wild. You guys uh, have a lot of experience in this area. We're going to now um, invert the, the, the attention. So the fish are going to recede into the, the water. And the bullies, we're going to put you in groups. Alice has been setting up groups of, I can't remember how many I told her, but I'm sure she has that totally on, on board. And you're going to have about eight minutes to um, chew on this and think about uh, uh, what insights and questions and recommendations do you have for doing meaningful, inclusive peer assistance? And this is slide number nine. I'm going to put the slides in the chat again. The Academy is academia. Yes, thanks, Sarah. <laughs> um, and um, what, what you're going to have eight minutes to have this conversation. And underneath slide nine, there's a bunch of other slides, right? And I'm going to share my screen for a second because that might be a, a more effective way to show this to you. Um, if you have a burning question that you want on the table, and we're not going to answer, quote unquote, all the questions today, but putting them on the table could be an ongoing conversation in CAM for Dev. You could put your burning question there. If you have key ideas, suggestions, here's a peer assistance process that I love. Add the link, add the name, we can add it. Or in any ahas that come up in the conversation with your peers, like, oh, I never thought of it that way. And this is not intended to capture everything, okay? It's intended to capture the things that you think would add value if you brought them back to the group. We can add more slides if you run out of space. This isn't by breakout group. It's kind of a chaotic uh, little swarm of bees dropping their pollen into the nest, if as it were. So before we set you free into your groups, do you have any questions about the process? Was I totally baffling and living in confusiasm? We're good? <laughs> come back. 
Um, I was just taking a minute to write down the aha that I gained from my partner who by asking a question just helped me understand something that I, I thought I understood, but I didn't. <laughs> so thank you. Um, so take a minute to look at the slides. I'll put the URL in the chat again. And if there is an aha or a question or a suggestion, please um, feel free to go ahead and type it in there. And just take a moment to look at what your peers are saying. And again, we're a large group. We can't look at all of it right now, but we're creating this kind of fodder for chewing on later on, to use a lobstock metaphor. Um, we'll chew on that later on um, and possibly continue on on the cam for dev list. So just take a moment, stroll through those slides. And if you want to grab a mic and say something, right now is a good time too. What are we looking at? What slides are we scrolling through? The slides where people took notes. Um, hold on a second. I think I accidentally sent it privately because Aldo sent me a greeting and I didn't notice because I wasn't looking at that chat at the moment. Hello, tell so Aldo I said hi. Uh, yeah, we're, we're a little, little triangle connecting. He knows her, she knows me, I know them. Um, slides 10 through, is it 14? I can't, I'm scrolling down here. Okay, yeah, we can see now. Yeah. And if for anybody's having difficulty seeing those, I'm happy to screen share just, um, uh, you know, it, we can do that if it's getting too slow for you. But thank you for speaking up because I didn't realize I sent it the document privately. I'm pretty shy, but once in a while I'll speak up. Yeah. You know, and definitely you can add to stuff later on. I, I just, um, I'll, if, if it's coming slow for all of you, I'll screen share for a second and just give you a, a flavor, okay? Because I don't want the slowness of the technology to slow us down. And Fish, this is your warning that you can pick one of those questions for your final thought to share back as we look at them. Hmm. Some brilliant stuff here. I wrote a blog post on peer assist. So now I'm gonna assistance. Now I'm gonna have to revise it with all your brilliance. <laughs> Should we even bother? <laughs> yes, let's subvert the hierarchy. Let's keep working on it. I know this me, me flipping slides is probably giving people seasickness. When we do collective note taking on slides, it's just fun to watch the little um, words appear. I, I, I find that, I don't know, mesmerizing. So Kate and Tony, do you have a hook for our final fish round. When you say a hook, are you saying specifically a question to ask the group or do you say a hook from like observing some gems from this previous round? Um, hold on, I'm answering a private message about it to set up for the next thing. Um, I, I, I would say this is uh, answering a question or, or leaving a suggestion for the next round, because I hadn't thought about it. So you just actually stimulated a new idea, which is we're going to do a, a Troika consulting next where you guys are going to share your peer assist challenge with two other peers and get help. So something in that list may be inspirational. So uh, uh, Kate, yes. So um, if the rest of you want to do the speaker view because it's easier than interrupting Alice who's setting up uh, uh, the, the next structure. Um, Kate, you want to kick us off this time then, Tony? There are some hands up too. 
Oh, there's hands I'd up. I'd rather hear some hands up. I'm not seeing the hands up, so thank you. So hand, who saw that hand and can respond to Shravita it? Shravita and Yasmin. Okay. Let's In the it. participant list. Um, Feel free to, um, there you go, Shravita. Uh, thanks so much. So uh, one of the things that I was observing even in the slides um, and nice that it came up is, is the uh, power dynamics um, and bringing in what somebody called previously marginalized voices, which is a nice way to put it. Uh, but, and I think this is one of one conversation we are now having uh, quite a lot, but also one conversation that has been ignored for a long time when it comes to traditional understanding of what PRSS means and what value it adds, or um, even the new buzzword social collaboration, uh, moving on from PRSS. So I think, would it make sense to talk a little bit about, you know, about uh, how this notion of, of power affects actually PRSS, like, um, uh, when the first definition was coming about, you know, with more experience or maybe even with more knowledge or these things that we make of, you know, um, who, to, who to approach for knowledge or which kind of knowledge uh, do I now want to uh, understand or get access to uh, or value and, and how, you know, in between all this, it, it kind of this far speaks of uh, do I consider myself, you know, an expert enough? Uh, mm. Or do I still think of, you know, of peer assist as being uh, a student trying to learn from betters and, and who is the better? Where are they coming from? Where is that knowledge coming from? Um, mm -hmm. And even this whole debate of decolonization of knowledge, sometimes, you know, you, you think about it and you're like, uh, even this is being predominantly led by Global North. <laughs> and and you're like, do we think the same way, you know? Uh, when I go back to, at least now I'm, I'm in this INGO sphere, but when I go back to and talk to my classmates and talk to my people who are still in the state level NGOs, local NGOs, or even local organizations, which, which have no international element to it. And, you know, if I take them and talk about decolonization of knowledge, it's not even an issue or, or they don't even understand it. And it's like, what are you even talking about? Uh, but at the same time, you know, um, when it comes to PRSS, suddenly there is a EU grant and then it becomes uh, a specific kind of knowledge where now I miss out because, you know, I'm out of that, that particular. Mm. Mm. So uh, I think yep. there, is, there is a lot to unpack there specifically, yeah. you know, peer assistant and power and, and how these things work, uh, what is now being called, uh, I don't know if I am being very bold about it, but aid colonization. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to respond because I think this is a whole cafe a starter question, but I, I think for me, questioning the power dynamics or just being aware of the power dynamics changes the game immediately whether and, and you know calling it decolonization is you know it might be a loading dock problem as kate called it you know let's let's give it a name and then you know then what do we do but i i i, I see the same dynamic you talk about when i'm working with watershed people here locally and i'm working with farmers i'm working with people who live in floodplains who generally have low income I'm working with tribes who have legal treaty rights that aren't being respected. And um, if, if we don't change our relationship to each other, we won't solve the problem. So for me, this who I am and who I am in relationship to you is important. But when we think about that from a business perspective, I'm not gonna take time for that. Let's just get the work done. Let's just get the floodplain fixed, right? But the floodplain isn't fixed unless we're in relationship with each other. And in, in this case, in relationship with the floodplain. Because the floodplain is an actor in this game too. So I really appreciate that. Um, and it, you know, in the, in the chat, this, this question of you know, who it is peer, I, my definition is whoever is related to the thing we're working on. <laughs> but I'm very, 
um, I have a wide net. I don't know. Kate or Tony, do you have any um, one or two thoughts before we close this out and leave a lot of unanswered questions for maybe a, an ongoing conversation on a, a listserv? Well, my, my only thought would be to summarize a little bit because it looks like we actually have two things that we've surfaced really cleanly. One is um, the, the kind of sharing of knowledge requires one's willingness to understand that there could be power differentials and that we need to put in skills so that we are hearing from lots of different voices, some of which have been historically not comfortable sharing or marginalized in any way. So problem number one is recognizing knowledge and creating this environment for sharing knowledge, environment and skills. And the second is, let's just say there was some transaction, this loading dock problem or this problem, as you said, around creating mutual assistance that persists after the peer assist is something that we all need to plan for. So it's interesting when I go into a conversation, I have to say, I've got to be ready to be changed. I'm going to be informed and it's going to possibly go deep into my core. But I also need to go into a conversation saying, if I share knowledge, I'm going to take some responsibility. Right. So that might make me more reluctant. But I also feel like it's empowering because I know I'm part of a system that's going to do the same for me. Sorry, that was a big mouthful. Yeah, thanks. Um the takeaway that I get here, uh, just listening through all this, is that yes, there is uh, you know a lot of value that we can assign to uh, peer assistance approaches for what they can, the contributions and bring in new ideas, um, mobilizing resources, uh, perhaps focusing on new approaches and and maybe even tapping into um, new partners. But uh, at the same time, um, based on the uh, discussions that I had earlier in my uh, breakout group, there's also quite a number of challenges that uh, need to be addressed here. The questions of how do you secure buy-in for peer assistance within, say, um, institutions or um, development um, projects? And beyond even the question of securing that buy-in is examining the environment in which a peer assistance is uh, deployed itself. Uh, should it be formalized or informal? Um, how, how best should peer assistance work in um, different contexts? And of course, there is the very important point of ensuring that uh, the built-in follow-up um, processes to ensure that you can gauge the impact of, 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 of peer systems. I'll leave that mm -hmm. for now. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm taking a few notes in slide 19 just because I, I want to make sure this is captured. So thank you, Fish. Thank you, Bowleys. Um, we can go back if you want to go back to the gallery view, um, just maybe if your camera's on, give a wave of appreciation to your peers who just stimulated way more than we could process in the short time we had. And I'd like to then just reflect a moment to go meta, as they might say, for a moment. And if you look at slide 20, and I'll share my deck, is just think about how did this particular fishbowl enable or not uh, peer assistance? You know, what sort of peer assistance emerged? Um, and as you think about that, you think of it, it, this is the practice that I'm trying to develop. What was the structure that enabled it or blocked it? How can that structure be adapted to a particular context? Um, and the, the last question really is just, you know, don't ignore that. But I'm just kind of curious. And if you want to take a second to write in chat, you know, any observations you have about the fishbowl as a peer assistance approach, because I don't think we generally call a fishbowl a peer assistance approach, but. You know, what do you think? So for those of you who like to think at the meta level, take a minute and um, you can uh, share that in chat. And I'm just going to call this fishbowl debrief. I like to put headlines into the chat. So later on, when I look at it, I can remember, oh, that part of the chat was about this rather than this kind of like. <sighs> 
yeah, uh, Catherine, I, I, particularly with large groups, if you did this with a small group, the amount of knowledge to and, 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 and stuff to process is smaller. So it does have a, a scale time relationship that you really have to pay attention to. And I appreciate you calling that out. Uh, there's an interesting variation of disabling the chat when the fish are in the bowl, um, and that's definitely worth uh, an, a different conversation. Beer assist. I like beer assist. I can't beer assist. It's too early in the morning, but uh, okay. So the, the, the next one we're going to do, again, reflects the fact that we are trying to subvert a little bit the power dynamic. And again, it is not always the goal, but today it is. <laughs> Um, and, and we're going to do a, a, a liberating structure called Troika Consulting, um, which is basically any three people can help each other. This goes to that radical end that anybody can actually help somebody else, even without domain or particular expertise. Now, of course, you're not going to apply this to a highly technical, like, how do I start the nuclear reactor, right? So let me just posit that this is not for highly technical knowledge exchange. Um, and so you're going to be put into groups of three. We're going to do a fairly abbreviated version. So you're not going to have the luxury of doing this as fully as possible. So I'm going to give you a minute to think about, you know, a challenge that you have around peer assistance. Uh, I, uh, peer assistance. I forgot to put that in there. And, and keep it simple. Don't, don't crack open the biggest problem you've got because we're not going to have time to deep dive into it as we normally would. Um, then you're going to be put into groups of three. Um, the first consultant will spend one minute explaining their challenge. Um, the consultants have about a minute to ask clarifying questions. And if you don't know what a clarifying question is, you can peek at slide 24, which is, uh, is that what you said? What, you know, just data points that would help you. You don't begin to, to answer or d dissect it. You're just getting simple questions of fact. And then the client is going to turn off their camera. I'm not going to turn off my camera, but I want you to see it. And they're going to have a piece of paper and a pen. And, and ideally, turn away from your computer so you're not tempted to look at your consultants. And you're just going to listen to them as they talk about your problem for about, uh, it's probably going to be more like three minutes here. Um, and then you turn around, and all you have to do is say thank you. You could say what was helpful, but you, you can just say thank you. While you're listening, do not turn around and justify something. Do not nod like crazy. Just listen. Just bathe in the insights of people who are different than you or similar to you. Okay. Um, I love anteater is, is, is highlighting things and it's kind of fun. Thank you, anteater. Um, so I'm going to give you a minute to think about your challenge before Alice sends us out. Somebody keep time because it's real easy to get lost in time. And Alice will send um, little blips about every five minutes saying it's probably time to move on to the next person. And we'll take 15 minutes to do this. So this is really, really kind of short, but it gives you a flavor. And don't forget when you're, you're the assistee, don't look at your people. Let them, and people, you're talking to each other. You're not talking to your assistee, okay? Questions, I'm gonna stop the share and look at the chat to see if there's any questions. Bye Kwame. Oh, I hate that people are leaving. Uh, These people I haven't seen in ages. I want to talk to you. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so uh, this may uh, make Alice have to do a tiny bit of shuffling. So if you find yourself not in a group of three, don't worry, we'll get to you. But when there's that drop off, we have to then do that. That's, that's something that's challenging. But you know, we chose to do 90 minutes. What can I say? Um, and yes, this is very similar to the case clinic use, used at um, uh, MIT, the Presencing Institute. Okay, think about your challenge. So I think as they come back, here we come, here we come. So take a breath because you probably didn't finish all three people. Yes, I acknowledge that and I acknowledge it was rushed. <sighs> Breathing is such a beautiful thing. We have bodies too. You might wanna roll your shoulders. Um, those of us doing virtual meetings, which is all of us, don't forget we have bodies, lovely bodies. Oh, someone's getting a, a, like a real human touch there. How sweet. 
Oh, that was a sweet moment that I just witnessed. Um, um, so take a minute to reflect on the process you just partially experienced. And is that a peer assist? Is it something that you might have? Thank you, Tara. Um, yeah, you were supposed to do all three, uh, Savitya, but there really wasn't enough time, so it's okay. Um, you know, how, how might this be a way to think about peer assistance and, and also think about the support element too. And just take a minute to reflect on it. And if you have an insight, um, I'm just gonna put a marker here in the chat. I will go Troika Insights. Just go ahead and put it into the chat. And particularly invite you to reflect on if you got a chance to be the assistee, what was it like to turn your back and just listen, not justify, not see your face reacting to someone's thought, oh, that was a stupid idea. Just listen. Uh, so, so Anne, I she noticed this thing about speed, and I think speed is something, or or pacing is something in the online environment that we can play with, and you get different results by playing with um, speed in different ways. Um, and, and time and space. If you're interested in that, there's one um, couple of friends of mine who do these experiments and they call them speculations where they play with time and space in online environments. This is in the liberating structures context, but um, I can dig that up and put it into the resource slide afterwards. I think they're still doing some. Yeah, okay. Terrific, terrific. And this is a face-to-face -face process too, works beautifully. There's many of you in the room who I've been in Troika consulting with, so. Um, we're gonna turn towards a reflection and uh, Tony and Kate, if you, you have any, um, you know, fish views on this, I didn't, I didn't set that up as an expectation, but I think there's a thread of your reflections from the beginning, the middle, and the end that might be useful. But I'd, I'd like us to think about a very simple debrief. Um, this can be done in breakout groups. It, it, um, we have such a large group, we're gonna do it in chat. And so you can do it pretty quickly in chat. But I'm gonna share my screen for a minute and just set this up. Oh, and actually just ignore that. I didn't, I left some artifacts from another slide. So I, I'd like you to reflect back on our uh, hour and 17 minutes together. And I'd like us to collect data in the chat. Would somebody put a marker line and put what in the chat? Since I'm sharing my screen, I, I can't do that at the same time. Is just notice any data points today. So um, a data point can be what process we used, who was here, how people seem to be feeling, um, but data facts and observations. And just take a minute. I like to usually take a breath and think about it before I start writing. But write your, your what's in the chat. Okay, so I noticed that some of us are starting to interpret the facts. So let's move to the next question. 
So what? So how do you explain these facts? What assumptions are at play? What patterns? What's important? You know, look at, and sometimes I need to scroll back up to the what's so that I can look at the so what's, but this is the interpretation time. Mm -hmm. You guys are brilliant. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. For those of you who are speed demons, I'm going to put the third question. So now what? And this one I'd like you to think about personally, okay? What action may help you move forward? Um, what step do you want to take? What's your next move? I um, mean, that could be about Cam for Dev as a community. It could be about you. It could be about your work. It could be, you know, how do I do peer assist in my neighborhood? I, it doesn't matter. But, you know, what are you going to do with this? What do you want from it? Yeah. So Tony and Kate, I'm going to ask you in a minute to just do uh, kind of your through line, one line, two line summary um, before we point to the resources and remind people about the next cafe. But I want to give people just a minute more on the, what their next step is. See, this is called um, uh, private conversations in public. I just told you all what I just wanted to tell those two people, but you all saw it because transparency can be a wonderful way of making things visible. <laughs> that was obvious. Listserv address for Cam for Dev. Let's grab that and get that in the chat. Sarah's nodding her head. She'll be on that like. Just out of curiosity, um, how many people here uh, are members of CAM for Dev and you can use the reaction and uh, put a thumbs up? This is interesting to see how many folks. There's multiple screens, so I'm gonna be, someone wanna grab a screen grab really quick? <laughs> okay, so we've, we've got a nice mix. It, you know, my eyeball looks about half. That's awesome. Okay, look at that. Okay, so um, if I'm going to share a screen here for a second, no, actually, Tony and Kate, let let's hear your your through line. All right, so my through line is that peer assist is a state of mind. It doesn't need to be a specific process. And you saw me put into the chat that we should be experiencing our Zooms over the coming weeks or maybe months as peer assists, as peer assistants, which means that we probably need to be spending more time thinking about what people need to hear and listening to them 
and be cognizant that when we are sharing, we are also responsible. That mutual assistance theme is one I'm going to return to. Good. Tony, yeah. your through line. Thanks. Thanks. Just to cap it off, um, just to re-emphasize, uh, it's obvious and there seems to be consensus that uh, peer assistance approaches are actually fun and um, exciting. To quite a, some people, there's a bit of caution in um, how to go about it, but it's evident that uh, if it's well applied, focused, uh, can achieve you know some quick um, gains, can be applied um, flexibly, and can flesh out some very fresh ideas and contributions. However, uh, it is quite prone to you know constraints of, of time and does call for quite some um, resources including where um, facilitation is necessary at least some more than basic skill in managing um, mm -hmm. group dynamics mm -hmm. Good. so my through line is thank you for coming and playing with us today and for helping me sharpen my thinking um, I want to share the screen for just a second to point out the resources and you're welcome. I can, I'm going to add a second resource slide so that other people could add resources. I'll come back with the speculation series link. Um, but really, the most important thing I want to say is that this is of and by the KM for Dev community. Um, and that uh, deep bow of thanks to all that I have learned from this community, which embodies what this whole conversation was about. So thank you very much. And I hand it back to our Knowledge Cafe hosts. Thank you very much, uh, Nancy. Really very nice to have you here with us and very nice to have you organizing all of this and, and leading us through this uh, theme. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, well, uh, Katrina and Tony as well for joining. Thank you, Alice, for organizing all of this from the back end and sending us on, on groups and everything. Um, thank you, Ginetta, for leading all of these preparations, of course. Um, thank you to the whole team. And of, of course, thanks to all of the participants. I think it has been a very nice session. Um, yeah, there's very little to say after all of these discussions. I think it has been fantastic. Really very much appreciated, Nancy, for this. This has been our thir 13th cafe since we started doing this uh, last year, the second in this year. I think it's yeah getting better and better. But of course, this is a bit of a problem for the next ones. You are all invited to join the next one, which I have just put on the, on the chat. We are going to be in uh, the 18th of March at 3 p.m. We will be having Rocio Sanz and John Hovell talking about knowledge retention. And of course, those of all of, you, all of you who are not part of this group already, please join. Join, you've got the link here. You can join uh, just by sending an email to the subscribe blah, blah, which is just up there on the, on the, on the chat. Um, those of you who are part of the group, of course, join the cafes and join the discussions. And you can also join on the LinkedIn, of course, and, and uh, continue discussing over there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy, fantastic. Thank you, Katrina and Tony. Once again, thank you, team, for organizing this. Thank you, all of you participants, for spending this one and a half hour with us and having another great session of the Knowledge Cafes. Thank you.